Hey everyone, Jay here, and in this intro to Python video, we're going to do lab 7.16. We're going to use a loop and modify a list with it. All right, so we're going to create a list. I have a list right here. It's just a binary represent, well, the digital representation of binary numbers 1 through 512. Okay. Uh, I'm going to print the list, then I'm going to double each value in the list, and then I'm going to print the list again. And the way you've got to treat lists or arrays, okay, if you hear me say arrays, I mean list in Python and in arrays in every other language. Um, the way you have to treat them is each element within the list is its own unique variable which has its own properties and all that. And you have to double, if you're going to manipulate them, we're going to double them, we're going to multiply by two. If you want to multiply each one by two, you actually have to loop through the list and do each one individually. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Good thing computers are great at doing things over and over again, and they never get bored, or at least they don't tell us about it. Uh, so I've got a function down here. I'm going to print the list, then I'm going to double it, and then I'm going to print it again, and then give you a little goodbye message. So the print list, pretty straightforward. We're just using a for loop. Each one is going to print. We've seen this before, probably, hopefully. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing twice, once before and once after we've doubled it. The doubler, we're going to pass it the list as a value and we're going to get a return value that is the list. So I have my list is going to be equal to whatever gets returned from the list doubler when I give it my list. Now if you haven't used uh, functions with return values in that too much yet and you're kind of confused how come my list is on both sides the way computers process these assignment functions, okay, the assignment operator right here, is it's going to process the whatever is on the right-hand side first, completely independent of what's on the left-hand side. It's going to process that to its entirety and then take whatever that value is and assign it to what's on the left. So the left and right-hand side of this, the computer is not looking at both of those at the same time at first. There's no confusion. There's no like what happens at X second when the values are, no, there's none of that, okay? If the computer is going to completely independently process the right-hand side, get a result, and then assign that result to whatever variable is on the left-hand side. It does not care or even know that it's the same variable on both sides. Not an issue. So let's look at what that function does. Okay, let's, yep, yeah, I got the whole thing on my screen here. So I'm just calling it list doubler. We're gonna pass my list. Now, strictly speaking, I could be passing by value or it could just give the value of the list or could be passing by reference or actually give a reference to the original list. And my function for my purposes doesn't matter which one I'm using, the result is going to be the same because I'm just taking in an argument and returning a value. So it doesn't matter, okay? In terms of performance or in terms of security or scalability, you might go one way or the other, but just in terms of getting the result I'm looking for, it doesn't matter, okay? And we haven't really dived very deep into that at all yet anyway, so let's carry on. So I have two methods, okay? In case you are, uh, this would be the more classical approach, and this would be the more Pythonic approach, okay? Because Python has uh, enumerate available and has some things that uh, other languages won't have. So the first method is we have a counter and a while loop, and I'm going to, in my previous video, I actually wrote the link function there backwards. I wrote it as uh, a method of my input, but it is a function on its own. 
Uh, in any case, we're going to loop from zero to the end of the list. And we're going to get the length of the list and whatever the length of the list is. So it doesn't matter if we were to run this, if we were to add more items to our list and run it again, the length would then be updated. Uh, and it would just run with the new length. So we're going to count from zero up until the length. And then the way we're going to access this is as a list. We're going to get my input and go through the element of whatever the counter is. So the first time is going to be element zero, next time is going to be element one, element two, then element three, and so on. And say my input sub whatever the counter is is equal to my input sub whatever the counter is times two. So we're going to get this value. And we're going to assign it to that element along the list. And then we're going to increment the counter. I'm incrementing after I do the work because I need this counter to be zero the first time. Otherwise, we skip the first one. We don't want to do that. So, this is the more traditional method. Uh, the second method, a little bit more Pythonic. What enumerate does is it's actually going to we're going to use a for loop. We're going to call enumerate in here, which is going to return two values. One is the counter. Okay, let's change that. Let's say you now let's say iterator and value. Okay. Okay, so it's going to return two numbers. The first one is going to be the iterator. The second one is going to be the value. And then I can access each element of my input by using the iterator. And I can I've separated which number it is in the list versus what the value of that element is. Which element in the list, element zero through the length of the list, and then it separated that number from the value. In the first one, I've got to access the value by using the number and saying, hey, give me the value of whatever's in this spot. Uh, in the second one, I actually get the value itself. Okay. And then I don't have to do the counter. Uh, we would have to run some performance metrics to see which one of these is. Uh, a little bit more performance heavy, which one is faster because this one is calling enumerate every time. The other one is calling length every time and it has a counter. I could also do this on the first one and have length be set as a variable and then call that function only once. And that would probably make this execute faster and slightly heavier on memory because I'm using one more variable. But in terms of performance, we would have to make a very, very large list and run these two head to head and see which one is faster. But I imagine it's going to be pretty close. And ultimately, the choice is yours. Which one of these do you think is easier to read and which one do you think is easier to debug in the future? They'll do exactly the same thing. They just do it with the code looking a little bit different. Okay, so that is completely up to you which one you're going to try. But once all of these values have been doubled, we're just going to return that say that my input. And remember, when it gets returned, it's assigned in here to my list, and then we're going to print it. Uh, I have the print run over here. Let me run it again. Let me clear and run this again. There we go. You can see all of that. Uh, so the numbers were 1 through 512. Then we doubled them, and they are 2 through 124. And we have our nice little goodbye message there. So that's this lab, right? That's lab 7.16. Uh, and I've given you two methods of writing the loop. 
Okay, one that's a little bit more Pythonic than the other one, and the method one, which is a little bit more classic. Uh, most of the time, you're going to see me do uh, method one because Python is not my primary language. Uh, so I tend not to lean toward doing things in a Pythonic way. Uh, they just aren't quite as familiar to me as doing them the way I've been doing it for years. Okay, and they both work pretty much the same. And one of them may or may not be faster. If we were to do this a million times, it would be interesting to see. But in any case, that is lab 7.16. And we have used a loop to modify a list and output the result. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.